to stop going around trying to pacify. It's time for God people to stop going around chewing up this baby food and we can't have no meat. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we come to you this day, Jesus. Giving you glory, giving you honor, and giving you praise, Jesus. Thank you for all the wonderful things that you do. Jesus, you said in you know, your word that in all things to give thanks. Lord Jesus, God, that's, that's a that's Lord Jesus saying a lot. You said in all things to give thanks. In the good times, bad times, Lord, we're to give thanks. Lord, we're to give you praise, Jesus. Lord, you gave us Job, a great example, Jesus. God, no matter what we go through here on this earth, God, we to throw our hands up, Lord, and say thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord give it, the Lord take it. Blessed be the Lord, Jesus. We bless you tonight. Blessed be the Lord, Jesus. Lord, no matter what we're going through, Jesus, we bless your name. Lord, we was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's a blessing to be in your house, Jesus. Lord, on a Friday night, Jesus. Lord, with most of the world, God, Lord Jesus, getting ready to go out and do, Lord Jesus, what the world do. But Lord, you have us here. Lord, doing God with those that love the Lord do. And that praise and worship you. Lord, that's to give you the glory and the honor. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, that you, God, given us that mind. Lord Jesus, to want to be in your house. Lord, we had not always had that mind. But Lord, by your grace and by your mercy, Lord, you have drawn us to you, Jesus. And we pray, God, that you'll draw others. Lord, we pray, God, that you'll save others. Lord, we pray, God, that you will deliver others, Jesus, that's out there. God, like we was once out there. But, Lord, you came and you rescued us. Lord, while we was yet sinners, Lord, the Bible said you died. You gave your life. Lord, you love your people. You concerned. You said you didn't come, Lord Jesus, for the righteous, but you come and call sinners to repent. Lord Jesus, oh, we pray. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, God, for your spirit that we feel here tonight. For all my sisters and all my brethren, Lord, that are gathered here, all your children. God, we pray right now over these requests. Lord Jesus, we pray. God, Lord, that you are, God, be merciful. Lord Jesus, you see, Lord, all these requests that we have here, written requests. Lord, and those that have a request in their hearts, Lord Jesus, that they have before you right now, we pray, God, that you answer the prayer of your people. Lord, that you'll hear our cry. Lord, that you'll come speedily. Lord, even our Brother, Lord, is Lord up there in Tiffany. Jesus, we know you told us to cease from man. Lord, it ain't what man say. Lord, but it what thus said the Lord. Jesus, God, the, you have the final say. Lord Jesus, you don't spoke it and you're watching over your word. God, to make it good. Lord, and I believe that with all my heart, with all that's within me, Lord. I don't care what the devil say. Lord Jesus, the devil is the devil. He's going to always be the devil. And you're God, and you're going to always be God. Lord, we're trusting in you. God, we're believing in you. And we're depending on you, Lord. Because we can't do it in ourselves. Lord, you told us, you showed us. Outside of you, Lord, God, we're fighting ourselves. But once we come in you, Lord, you'll fight for us. That's what you told us, Lord. Lord, that when God, your word, was speaking. Lord, help us, Jesus, to trust the word of God. You said, I'll fight for you. 
Lord David said the battle belongs to the Lord. It ain't mine to fight, but it's yours. God, it belongs to you. It's not I have to fight, but it's yours, Jesus. God and Lord, you ain't never lost a battle. Oh, Jesus, you ain't never been knocked down. Oh, you the God, heavyweight champion of the world, Jesus, for your people. And we're trusting you, Jesus. Move tonight. God, give us such a spirit of the revival, such a stir of revival in our hearts, Lord. Rejuvenate us, God. Oh, God, stir us all that we can't go to sleep, Lord Jesus. Stir us all, God, that we'll be waking up early, Lord Jesus, calling upon our God. Lord, I wish tonight, God, that you'll stir everyone that's in this service. Jesus, put such a fire of the Holy Ghost in us, God. Burn us, Lord. Oh, let the fire the Holy Ghost burn us, Jesus. Oh, burn up everything in us that's not like you, Jesus. Oh, fill us with your spirit. Lord, with your power and your anointing. And bless us all. Heal those that need healing. Lord, those that God, Lord, might be fighting something. Lord, that need to overcome. Oh, Jesus, God, I pray you'll destroy that yoke. Lord, I pray, God, you destroy the bands, the shackles. Lord, that thing that got that person bound. God, that they can't seem to, Lord, get the upper hand. I pray tonight, Jesus, that that anointing, God, will cause them to get the victory. Lord, the Bible says you always cause us to try out. Oh, Jesus, cause them to try out tonight through Jesus Christ. Whatever it may be, God. Oh, I pray, Lord, that you'll do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we're asking. God, and all that we're expecting you to do tonight. In your holy son, Jesus Christ, the Nazareth's name, let it be so. Oh, I mean, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I mean, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, I mean, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on now, you can do better than that. How many love Jesus? Maybe I need to, maybe I need to uh, ask you to act like you're in a ball game. Maybe I need to ask you to act like you're, you're in a basketball game, football game. Man, people go to these games and man, they get up and they scream. Somebody scored a touchdown. Man, they act like they don't make it that. Hallelujah, but we come in the house of, of the Lord where, where Jesus, my God, went to the cross. The Bible said while we was yet sinners, Jesus had us on, the, on his mind. No greater love than this, that a man to lay down his life. No greater love than this, that a man to give his life. And man, we come in the house of the Lord and we just sit down. The devil is a lie. My God, my the God I serve, he's a lie. The God, God is alive. Hey. He's the living God. Hey. I can't see how people can serve a living God and be a dead vessel. Oh, it just don't mean it don't it don't it, it can't happen. You can't serve the living God and be a dead vessel. Amen. Now I'm gonna tell you, you can't be in religion and be dead. You can't be in tradition and be dead. But once you come into Jesus. Oh, once you, the Bible said, taste. Once you taste Jesus, once you taste life, the Bible said, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. Once you come to Jesus, you can't just come to church and sit down. Oh, you can't come to church and just, and just act normal. You know, that's what religious people do. Amen. Dignify, you know, they come in church. <laughs> Cross their leg. <laughs> you know, they had like they died for you. They had like they went to the cross. My God, but David said, I'm going to bless the Lord. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. David said, soul, you going to bless God. He bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefit. Hallelujah. Who forgives all? Not just some of your sin, but forgive all of your sins. Yes, yes. Woo. Woo. And he didn't just stop at the sin. The Bible said, it heals all 
of your diseases. How many know that Jesus done it all when he went to the cross? He didn't just go to the cross for you. Jesus went to the whipping pole for you. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. The blood of Jesus still saved. The stripes of Jesus, they still heal. God ain't lost no power. Just the people are dead. Don't make God dead. Just because a person is dead, it don't make God our God dead. Oh, he's alive and well. My God, he's alive in me. Oh, brother, the man of God sang that song. He lives. He lives. He lives in me. Jesus is living in me. He is my life. He is my joy. You know why people ain't, you know, the Lord's been telling us to be strong, encouraging us to be strong in the Lord. You know why people ain't strong? Because they ain't got no joy. The Bible said the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible said that we're supposed to praise God all of the time. In everything you're going through. We don't supposed to be walking around here like we're sucking limits. We don't supposed to be walking around here like we're dying and down in the press. We're supposed to be uplifted people. We're, we ain't like everybody else. We can be in the fire and we can be shouting. And nobody can never know. Why? Because in all things we're thanking Jesus. Yes, yes. Man. Who would have thanked God? You know, you can come to a man, the Job, the Jesus, the devil came and appeared before Jesus. And he said, How you, Jesus said, How you consider my servant Job? How you consider him? He said, Lord, you know I have. Don't think the devil ain't after you. He said, but I can't get to him. Hallelujah. I can't get to him. Oh, you got a hedge about this man. Oh, once you're in Jesus, my God. Oh, it makes all the different people. Amen. You know, the Bible said he. He, the 91st Psalm, he that dwells in the secret place. I preach, the Lord had me to preach on that. Said he that dwells in a secret place. A secret place everybody don't know about it, Sister Kathy. A secret place is a place that's hidden. Everybody don't know it's a secret. Only, only those that the Lord choose to reveal. The Bible says he that dwells in this place. This secret place in God. There's a place in God that everybody don't get to go. It's a secret place. It's a place where the righteous can hide in God. That he that dwells in this secret place of the most high, this is what I like about it, shall abide under the shadow. And man, I was praying and the Lord was just speaking to me. It said, you can't have a shadow without a present. He that dwells shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means if there's a shadow, let me see, do I got a shadow somewhere around here? Where you at, shadow? Where well, y'all see the shadow? So you got to have a present. And I was outside praying, and the Lord, man, the Lord just so real. And I saw a bird. Didn't see the bird, but I saw the shadow. And when that bird flew over, by me seeing the shadow, I knew the presence of a bird was there. That's what Jesus was telling us. That you shall abide under the shadow. See, that shadow means that Jesus, he was present. And that shadow of Jesus, you abide under that shadow. 
And next thing you know, we've been trapped in it. Man, you got people, we're supposed to be people of God. Man, you get our phone, we got all kinds of games. Man, Bob said when Paul said when I was a child, <laughs> I guess it's still true. I'm trying to become a man. Man, I'm trying to grow up in Christ. I'm trying to become a man in the Lord. Paul said when I was a child, I, I act like a child. When I was a babe, I act like a babe. It's, it's time for God people to put the ball away. It's time for God people to stop going around sucking the pacify. It's time for God people to stop going around chewing up this baby food. And we can't have no meat. If we need God, we need the meat of the world. Yes. Oh, man. Lord, I mess around and ate some bison. Oh, Jesus, what do I want to do that for? Man, please. I don't even want to see steak. <laughs> Man, you eat some bison. Man, good. That's what, man, Jesus is better than bison. Man, we get a hold of some real good meat. It changes you. And that's what the Lord is, is doing. He's changing us. And, I'm gonna, it, and it all starts right here. I want to talk to you. That secret place. How and how we can come into this, this place in God. Jesus spoke here in the 18th chapter of Luke. There are one thing I believe that can carry us into that realm. That the Lord is taking us. And it's our dedication. How bad do we want it? How bad do you want it? Man, they sang that song, gonna take back what the devil stole from me. And I think a verse say, how bad do you want it? I want everything God got for me. What the Lord say about it. Say, that's what we gotta see. What God say about this thing. How bad do we want it, Brother Chris? How bad do we want the fullness? How bad do we want Jesus to come in us and be perfected in us? How bad do we want to live for God? Jesus said here, and he spoke a parable to them to this end that men are always to pray. Looking for my little, like a pad, I left it back here. Man, are always to pray and not think. Never think. Never think. Don't you know, if anybody trying to live for God, you're going to find out that there's two of the hardest things to do. That the devil fights you the most. That's prayer, fasting, and reading the Bible. Yeah. He fights you the most in those areas. Because those areas represent your dedication. He fights you in prayer, reading the Bible, but you can, can't go to sleep. TV on, just watch me. Well, you and you are. Oh, I, I just wish I'd go sleep. Get your Bible. Amen. Amen. Get your Bible. It's just something about you go reading the Bible. Oh boy. <laughs> that flesh, like, I don't want this. The Bible is a flesh killer. The Bible said we're clean by the washing of the water of the word. So the devil, fight those out. But Jesus said here in the, the word, men are always, always to pray and not think. Amen. Prayer 
is of the utmost importance. You ain't going to do much for God without prayer. You ain't going to live for God without prayer. We're going to have to pray. Prayer is a disposition is a other position. You're bowing down before your king. You're bowing down before Jesus and you're going to him in prayer. Now prayer was so important that here in Luke 11 chapter, the disciples came to Jesus as he was praying in a certain place. And when he sees, see Jesus is our example, the Bible said. Jesus was a man of prayer. He didn't tell him not to pray and he didn't pray. He said that his disciples saw that he prayed. And they came to Jesus. One of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. If there ever been a time for us to be asking God to teach us to pray, it's now. If there ever been a time for us to be asking God to help us to pray, it's now. Say, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. That's John. See, John, even John taught his disciple to pray. Prayer is important. Having an altar in your life is important. Fire comes from the altar. You know, the devil, oh, he'll let us sing all day. It's good to sing. It's good to pray. But praise the Lord. And the devil, he'll let you sing. Oh, but my God, he don't like to see you go into the cross. He don't like to see you go into this position. Because this is the position of war for God's people. This position means I'm finna go to battle. This is where we go to battle in. On our knees in prayer. Taking everything to God in prayer. See, this is the position that we battle. That we go to the fight. How many of you seen that movie, War Room? Man, she had a place called the War Room. This is the place where I go to war at. This is the place where I win the victory at. This is the place where I get the deliverance at. Not at church. But in my closet. Oh, if you ain't praying at home, you ain't going to pray in church. If you don't have the Holy Ghost at home, you ain't going to have it in church. If you don't have Jesus at home and everywhere else you go, you ain't going to have him in church. That's just a front. Jesus is he's either in you or he's not. But he said, teach us to pray. And Jesus, and he said unto them, when ye pray, ask for a call. Ask for your bank account to be full. Ask for, for, for a brand new home. He said, when you pray, now I, ain't, I didn't write this. This is in red, my Bible. He said, when you pray, Say, our Father, which art in heaven, oh, hallowed be thy name, oh, ain't it sweet name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. I want to stop right there, man, because I probably won't get off of this. He said, pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth. Mean God will be done with the earth. God will be done in you and I as he had it to be done in heaven. Now, we do our will, but when you pray, pray. Lord, thy kingdom come. Where? 
Thy will be done. I guess we ain't read this. So, in other words, the kingdom come. Your prayers will say a lot about where your affection is. Amen. Your cry to God will tell God everything he needs to know. Come on. Jesus said that when you pray, he said here in Matthew, They said, Lord, teach us to pray. I'm going to hit, go to Matthew, but I want to read this. So Jesus don't just tell us to do something. He, he, he led the way. He was our example. Said here in Luke, the sixth chapter and the twelfth verse, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a, a mountain to pray and, he, and continued. Now this is Jesus. Continue all night in prayer to God. But then you got some people say, you don't have to pray. It don't take all that prayer. I mean, you can't pray too much. There ain't no such thing as over praying. Oh, he's just over praying. How can you over pray when Jesus said, man, I always to pray? How can you be too dedicated? Man, they just too dedicated for me. Oh, they just go to, they just go to church. They just too, too holy, too righteous for me. How can we be too holy? How can we be too righteous? The Bible said our righteousness is filthy rags. But the Bible said Jesus, he went and he prayed all night long. Oh, all night long. Then, oh, we can sing two or three hours, but then let us try to pray two or three hours. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I just can't do it. I can't. I just can't do it. Why? The Bible said that the disciples couldn't, so they went to Jesus. They said, Lord, I want to pray. Teach me how. Yeah. People don't know. They don't want to know how. It's just easy not to do it. But when, in order to go to where God's taking us, prayer is going to pave the way. Our dedication is going to pave the way. Oh, I'm going to show you the scriptures. Man, the Lord, they take the scriptures and show them. Jesus prayed all night. Knowing how to pray. Knowing what to pray for. That the kingdom come. He said here in Matthew. The sixth chapter, the third, third, third verse. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know what the righteousness of God is? God writes God righteousness in every aspect of your life. God righteousness in your home. God righteousness in everything you do in your business. Everything you do is righteous before God. It's righteousness. Amen. Everything. The rightness of God in every aspect of your life. Come on. Amen. See first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now what he's talking about. Right here. You see he said here in the. Oh on over the 625th verse. No man. Well let me start over here. Because this is good. 24th verse. No man can serve two masters. But either he will hate the one and love the other. See we can't serve God in the flesh. We can't serve God in man. We can't serve God and then tend to the flesh. Jesus said, no man that wars and tangling himself with the affairs of this life. No man that's warned for Jesus get caught up in all this stuff. Amen. Because they know that the Lord is taking us somewhere. 
in him. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Can't serve God and, and pursue the world. Can't serve God and trying to go after all this other stuff. He said, therefore I say unto you, see you can't, you can't serve God and this and, and, and get this, see this secret place that God taking us to. It's for a select group of people. It's for a people. I think I heard someone say that nothing else matters but God's kingdom. Amen. Nothing else matters but the work of God for their life. He said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Oh my God. Man, don't let this step all over your toes. Take no thought for your life. Man, we thinking about tomorrow right now. Yeah. Thinking about what we're going to eat when we get home. Jesus said, take no thought for your life. That's all we think about, us. That's about all people think about is them. It's about ourselves. Jesus said, take no thought. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to go to this place. Amen. I heard Mama Andy said, Brother Tara told them coming up, if you can come from Matthew 5, I believe she said, 5, 6, and 7, you won't have no problem. If you can, if you read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, I believe, and if you can come to that, see, this is Jesus telling us what we got to do to come into this secret place. He's telling us to take no thought for tomorrow, take no thought for our life, in what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you should put on is not the life more than the meat and the body than raiment. Before, he said, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye so much better? Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Jesus said, My God, you didn't make yourself grow. I don't know about you, but I was born a baby. Amen. He said, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't make yourself grow. You grew by the power of God. Ain't it something that how the Lord just calls a baby to be born and come up and you just grow? He said, you didn't, take no, you, you didn't make yourself grow. I've done that. You didn't add to your statue. Why take you thought for raiment? He said, consider the ladies of the field. How they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. And yet, I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Solomon had all the Bible said. He was one of the richest king. But the Bible said he was not arrayed like this. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye a little faith? That's what the Lord told me. I ain't had no He told me, you, you didn't have faith, you had mouth. O ye a little faith, because when we're doing this, that shows we don't have, we ain't trusting God. And he said, O ye a little faith. And the Bible said, whatever is whatever is not faith. Is sin. For after all these things, Jesus said, after this, this is what the world sees. This is what the Gentile is going at. But this is not what God's people, this is not what we're supposed to be going at. Why? You want to know why I'm reading this? Because we got to know how we need to pray. How we need to center our prayer. Jesus told us to take no thought. You thought he, he didn't just write this just to be writing it. He knew men. He knew that we're self-centered people. He knew that we'd come to him and it's, Lord, give me this and give me that. Everything that we need, the Lord told us, instructed us in that prayer. 
Pray, our Father, which art in heaven, how to be thy name, thy kingdom come. Your will be done in me, in us, as it is in earth. Say, don't we seek enough all this stuff? For this is the Gentiles seek after. But Lord, know we have all, God know we have need of all this stuff. God wants us to be praying for the kingdom rather to come in us. He said, pray, the kingdom come. The kingdom of God comes in us. Pray, that is his will. God will be done in our life. Man, I'm, I'm messed up so much in life doing what I want to do. Most of all the trouble that we've got ourselves into is what self-inflicted. Because we're trying to do it ourselves. But where God is taking us, it either, we either going to do it His way or we ain't going to get there. It's Jesus' way. Ain't no other way. There's no other door. There's no other way. But this way that he is giving us through the scripture. Take no thought for your life. Now he said here. The 20th verse right here in the 6th and the 19th. He said, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Where moth and rough filters rub, and where thieves break through and steal. Man, people work and work and work and work. Lord, trying to lay up treasure on earth. Trying to have on earth. But he said, lay not up for yourself treasure on earth. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Right. Where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. And what thieves do not break through nor steal. Man, people trying to lay up where I'm not leaving. Man, trying to have something to leave the people so they can fight over it. Man, my mama left me the best thing that she could ever leave. She left me Jesus. She taught me Jesus. She taught me to have faith in God. She taught me to love everybody. My mama taught me to love everybody. Oh, I didn't see. I ain't never saw a color. That wasn't never in our home. Man, we was brought up to love everybody. And even your enemies. Don't fight love them. That's what was taught to us. And I'm glad because now I read it and it's in God's word. The love. Man, people lay up. But Jesus said, lay not up for yourself, church. It's like the way your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. If your heart beats for God, if God is your treasure, that's where your heart's going to be. If the Lord is what you treasure the most in your life, that's where your heart's going to be. Your heart's going to beat for God. Your heart's going to go after God with all that it has because that's your treasure. Jesus said where your, where your treasure is, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. That's why you land up treasure on earth. That's why your heart, your heart is in this earthly. But if you land up treasures in heaven, then your heart is dead. Where your treasure is, that where that there, that where your heart will be also. So if you're doing that, he said here. Oh man. Oh, I know the why the flesh. Flesh don't like to be picked on. Oh boy. How I many know we've been picked out to be picked on by Jesus? Hallelujah. I read that scripture last night where they said, Moses, I told you to leave us alone. Why you know, let you just love us in Egypt? But no, God ain't gonna leave us alone. We're chosen. Yes. We're different people. God is calling us to carry us into a place in Him, brother. The Lord is calling us to go into a place in Him. And this place that the Lord is taking us, oh, we're gonna have to learn. We're gonna have to learn Jesus. 
Amen. He said here, this people draws nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. See, that's easy to do. That's what the Lord told me. I had mouth. That's easy to draw close to the Lord with your mouth. It's easy to come and say, oh, how I love Jesus. That's easy. Man, that's easy to come and say, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, it don't take you, it don't take you and to, 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 you in church, you in the moment, everybody else seem to be singing, it's easy to get up there and, 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 and draw nigh to him with your mouth. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I, oh, Jesus, I praise you. Jesus said, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth. Oh, they speak of me with their lips. Oh, but I'm looking at their heart, and their heart is somewhere else. I'm looking at their heart, and the Bible says their heart is far from me. We can get up here and draw nigh to the Lord, or we can praise Him, but Jesus said you can speak of Him with your mouth, with your lip. But where is our heart? Is our heart going after God? Is our hearts daily going after Jesus? Is He our treasure? Is he your treasure tonight? Is Jesus your treasure? Is this kingdom of God a treasure to you? Because the Bible says that you'll sell everything you got to purchase this field. You'll give everything you got. You'll give up you. That's the hardest. That's, the, that's going to be the, the, the hardest to give you up. Oh, we just love us. We want to do it our way. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I don't feel condemned. You know why? Because you ain't coming to the altar. You ain't coming into the light. The Bible said the light exposes. Oh, it's easy now, man. I put in some new light bulbs in the house. Man, you don't know how. I didn't know how dim it was to I put in new bulbs. Right. I put new bulbs in, man, and it was so bright. I, I, I said, man, I went and changed all the bulbs. <laughs> man, once you, once you put, once that light come, you start seeing little dust. You start seeing little dirt. You start seeing stuff that you, you didn't know was there. Amen. Because it, it wasn't exposed yet. But light, the, the closer you come into this light of Jesus, the closer you come to Jesus, the closer you come into this light, the more God exposed you. When Isaiah came into this light, he said, woe is me. Oh God, I'm undone because once you come into perfection, you realize that you are imperfect. Once you come into Jesus, you realize that your righteousness is just filthy rag. You realize that, that that you think you got is just filthy rag. And you say, woe is me. For I'm undone. I don't have it. Oh, I've just been exposed. For I'm a man uh, unclean lips hanging out with the people they unclean to. See that light exposes. You can draw now to Jesus with our mind. We can honor him with our lips. Come on. The Bible says everything that let everything have breath, praise him. But their heart is far from me. But he went on saying, but in vain they do worship me. It's just vain. Because their heart ain't in. It's just vain because they ain't sold out. They ain't gave all. Jesus, I heard somebody say, Jesus, God can have all of me. Oh, he ain't going to take nothing less. God, you ain't going to come to God and say, okay, God, you can have me from, from my waist up. But I'm keeping that little bit. 
Oh, you got to come to him. And God, either he's going to have all of you, or he ain't going to have nothing. We're going to have to give all our life to Jesus or nothing. You can't come to Jesus and think you're going to straddle the fence. Man, I, when I was talking to that brother today, I said, man, that's just how I was. He said, I want to be saved. But he said, I want to be real. That's what, see, that was my prayer. I wanted to be saved, but I wanted to, when I got saved, I told God I wanted to be real. I didn't want to walk around here in church going to hell. I wasn't going to go to church and go to hell. My God, I'm already going to hell in the world. I said, if I get saved, I want to be real saved. I want to live for Jesus. And I, man, he said the same thing. I said, that was my prayer. Man, you know, ain't got no time to be running around here, straddling the fence, coming to church, playing with God, spitting on grace. That's what people do when they hear the gospel, when they hear salvation preached, and they just go and do it, what they want to do. They, the Bible said they trap over him. Amen. This is what they do. They say, hey, don't Jesus, I don't want this. I'm going to do what I want to do. The Bible says they trump over the grace. They trump over the blood of Jesus. They just, you can't, once you come and hear this gospel, and you just decide you're going to keep doing you, the Bible says then, then you don't have no other. Yeah. You don't reject it. You don't walk away from it. In vain, they do worship me. Teaching for doctrine, the commandment of man. See, the heart. God want our, all of us. Amen. He ain't going to take some of us, a part of us. He's going to take all. He's going to perfect the whole man. James. Here in the fourth chapter. He said, from which come wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that wars in your members? Ye lust, and ye have not. Ye kill, and ye desire to have, and ye cannot attain. Ye fight and war, ye cannot have. Ye have not, because you ask not. See, praying. You have not, because you, you ask not. What are we asking for? What we're praying for, we're supposed to be praying for his kingdom. That's what I'm trying to install into us. We're supposed to be seeking those things that pertain to God's people. That's what our prayer should be more full with things of God, praying for others, praying for our sister and our brother, more than just praying me, me, me. God, give me this. God, I need this. God, I need that. Oh, we're going to be praying that prayer. We need to pray, God, that you are increasing me. When we pray for us, we need to be praying, God, kill this old man. God, help me to get rid of this flesh. God, help me to crucify this flesh. Help me to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. That should be our prayer. Let your kingdom come. Amen. Let your kingdom come. So that people lust. They desire to have, they can't have because they, they don't ask. And when they ask, they receive not because they ask and miss. They, they want it for some lust reason. Lust, some reason of the flesh. That they might consume it for their own lust. Look at here. The sixth verse says, but he give more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Submit yourself. Therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God. You can't draw nigh to God without a, without a dedication. We can't, the Bible says, draw nigh to God, people. We're supposed to be getting closer each and every day. You and I, we're supposed to get closer and closer to Jesus. It ain't, Jesus said, pray, give me this day. day he said, pray, give me day by day my daily 
daily bread. He didn't say pray, give me day every other day. He said pray, give me day by day. He said take no thought for tomorrow. See, we're taking thought for tomorrow. But now, this is, the, right now we need Jesus. Right now, this day, we got to have our daily bread. Each and every day. You can't live off of what God done for us last night. We got to go on to know Jesus. You can't live off of what God done for you weeks ago. We need a fresh touch. We need a fresh anointing. We need God to touch us every day. I want to feel God's spirit every day. I want to go into his presence every day. I want to abide in him every day. I don't want to be walking outside of Jesus. He said, draw not. Draw not. Come on, Sister Misty. He said, draw not. He said, draw not. You stop right there. He said, draw not now. See, this is what God, come a little closer. Stop right there. See, God see you drawing out of him. Yeah. The Bible says he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And he see you, come a little closer. Stop right there. And he see you drawing out of him. And he noticing that. You see where she started from? Man, she was way back there. But look where she at now. She closer. And the Lord sees it. Come a little closer. Stop right there. See, she's drawing now. Yeah. And the Lord seeing her. Come a little closer. See, she's drawing now. All right. And the Lord see her. See, you see, she's now look there. She don't came up here. She don't went from one, 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 one elevation to another. To, to she don't step up into a, another elevation. She's she in a different realm. She, oh man, that's a long way. See how far she don't came? Oh my God, we can't draw back. Man, I don't, who want to go way back there? Man, that's a good way that she don't made it. Oh, now, not only she don't made it off of this flat plane, oh, she don't came up a little high. Oh, the Lord said, come up here. Oh, she done stopped up a little high. Oh, and God, oh, he, his eye, he's looking on her. Oh, he sees somebody. My God, that's, that's drawing out to him, to Jesus. Jesus loved for us to love on him. Oh, he loved for us to have him as the, as the center of our life, that he's the most important thing in our life. And here's a person, my God, that done draw not to God. Oh, she done left the kingdom. In the back, she don't let the grandkids, the grandkids in the back. Oh, she don't got her eyes on Jesus. Oh my God, and she don't forgot, and now she's drawing out. And Jesus, she don't cause Jesus, my God, to stand up. See, that's what we need. We need to get so hungry for God. We need to draw to God and call Him to stand up. You can't draw. God say, I draw not to you. He can't draw. We ain't no stupid seat up there. To come to you. The Bible says he's sitting on the right hand. He's going to stand up. We need to go, God, to stand up. Oh, when he see you coming to him. And to call God to stand up. Oh, come a little closer. Oh, look at her. Stop. Now she don't okay. came. Oh, God, see somebody. She don't came into a, 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 a atmosphere. Hallelujah. What we call the secret place. What we call that you can come into the, the, the presence of the God, presence of the Lord, by drawing now. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 By drawing now, yeah. she don't cause yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. To take notice. That's what prayer does. Oh, when we get our prayer centered. Oh, when we learn how to pray and start praying for the kingdom to come. You know what's going to happen? It's going to come. When we start praying for the kingdom to come, you know what's going to happen? It's going to come. We ain't praying for it to come. We ain't praying for God's will to be done in them as it is in heaven. We ain't praying for that. 
when we're doing that, that's how you draw nigh. Oh, that's how you draw nigh. And now she's up here. Oh, wait. Hallelujah. Shining still. Wait in the presence. Hallelujah. She can't go back. Hallelujah. That's just too far to go back. Oh, so what she do? She just enjoy the glory. Hallelujah. Just come up and my God, the Lord take her in his arm. My God, is in the secret place and say, hey, I got something I want to tell you. I got something I want to share with you. See, it's personal. See, all y'all, baby, y'all, y'all still down there. But she, she done made it up here. She done came up here in this place that God's trying to take us. It's a place, a secret place. And she just, you can't go back. Oh, you just got to stay up here now. Hallelujah. So you got to go sit. My God, God don't get us. And he ain't going to sit. He ain't going to let us go back. He going to keep us. He going to preserve us. He going to bring us up into this place. And we going we gonna to dwell in the atmosphere. We going to dwell in that secret place. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Amen. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Get your heart. Don't be double-minded. Double-minded person, you, you, in the, you don't know. You got you, you double-minded. You got two minds. You got one mind. You want to do, I want to serve God. I really do. Yeah. But I just, you know, I just met this girl. <laughs> uh, I want to serve God, but I'm just not quite ready to to give up this habit. Devil mind. Unstable. That's what the Bible says. Unstable. The wind you blown all over the place. One minute, oh, next minute, no. Drawing out. Cleanse your hand. Draw. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Man, and cry. Man, I pray, I cry. Tears of joy. I weep. Jesus said, Weep. Weep for his people. Weep between the altars. Cry that the Lord aspires people. That God won't give his inheritance over to the devil. That he won't give us over to reproach. Cry. Be afflicted. Weep. Mourn. Pray. Pray. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Oh. And your joy to heaviness. If we turn, and then Jesus, if we do that, then Jesus said, He'll turn our, our mourning into joy. He'll give you beauty for your ashes, He'll give you joy for your mourning. But you gotta mourn. You don't even mourn and then just. Complaining, that ain't, that ain't mourning, complaining. That's complaining is just what it is, complaining. Mourning and crying out to God and praying. It's just you do it because you love him, brother. It's love motivated. You ain't praying because, oh man, something done happened, I gotta go pray. You pray because I just love to pray. I love to get alone and talk to Jesus. Because that's where my heart is. I love to get out and just walk and meditate and just think on Jesus and just talk and communicate with Jesus. Then say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable 
in his sight. That's what we need. We need to, whatever we do, we need it to be acceptable in God's sight. Not acceptable to us. It needs to be acceptable to God. Do God accept our prayer right? You might think you're doing a real good job. But did God accept it? When he look at it, God is acceptable in his sight. Oh, God, that little man, in the, if you read on in the 18th chapter, what that stuff he done, God did not accept it. He boasts and brag how he do this and how he do that, but it wasn't acceptable. God said, he didn't go down in his house, Jesse. But the sinner, they said, Lord, I'm a sinner. God accepted him. Armor yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. I got one more scripture. I got more scripture, but I'm just going to read one more because it's important. Right here in Romans. The chapter, the 8th chapter of Romans. And I'm sorry, the 25th verse. It said, but if we hope for that we see not, then we, then do we with patience wait for it. He said, likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know, the Bible said. We don't know what we should be praying for as we ought to pray. Even though it's right here in the, the Word. But we don't know what we should be praying for as we ought to pray. So the Bible said the Spirit. That's why it's good to get in prayer. Get somewhere and get consecrated. And let God take you into the spirit of prayer. Let him take you into that, that place of prayer. But he said as we ought to, but the spirit itself. See, the Holy Ghost in us. Once we start praying, God, that spirit of prayer come over us. And we get caught up in prayer. The Bible said the spirit itself will take over. The Holy Ghost. And the, how many of you been praying and God, the Spirit of God just start crying out in you? Start weeping through you and weeping in you. My God, you just couldn't control it. You know what that was? It was the Spirit itself taking over. Because we don't know what we ought to pray for as, as we ought to. Yeah. But the Spirit knows what we need. And the Spirit ain't going to be seeking the corner. The Spirit is going to be seeking the things that be of God. It's going to be hungry and praying for the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. And it's going to do all that I just read. It's going to weep. It's going to flick. It's going to mourn. It's going to cry out. And you ain't going to be able to control it. Why? Because God himself. Because you have took the, the opportunity. You have took the time to humble yourself. To get into your prayer closet. To and God has saw that and he draws nigh to you as you draw nigh to him in prayer. God the Spirit comes and draws nigh and God meets you there and the Spirit takes over. You begin to pray and it said it makes intercessory for us which with groaning which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts. See, God search our hearts. He knows within our heart. People say that and they get on my nerve with it. When God knows my heart, you sure right. <laughs> People, they just say that all the time. Well, he knows my heart. You show right, God knows your heart. Bible said we don't even know our own heart. That's in the Bible. The Bible said the heart is deceitful above all. Who can know it? Man, your heart will have you to see you right to hell. 
said, but the spirit searched the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit. It knows what the mind of the spirit is. Because he made intercession for the saints. See, right here, you need to underline that. See, the spirit made intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God for your life. It made intercession for according to the will. See, we pray. We pray for, for, for us naturally most of the time. How many? Just be honest. Most of the time our prayer is centered around us. But when the spirit prays, and once we get a spirit of prayer, that our prayer is going to be centered around Jesus. Once we walk in the spirit, we're going to pray. When our prayers are prayed, they're going to be prayers for that that pertains to the kingdom. And saying, we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Pray, that's what it's going to take. Man, it's going to take us to come into this place. A hunger, get back to our prayer life. Lord, we thank you for this work. Oh, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, there's so much more scripture, God. Lord Jesus, about prayer, God, and about you, Lord Jesus, what prayer does. Oh, God, I do believe that prayer, Lord, brings us into that secret place. Oh, Lord, I do believe, God, that, Lord, there's no other way. Lord, there's no other way into this place. Lord, but I'm in ourselves and praying. Oh, Jesus, oh, I pray tonight, God. Lord Jesus, that you'll stir us up. Lord, I'm striving. Striving, you said, to strive and enter in at the straight gate. Lord, I ain't satisfied with just saying, I love you. Oh, God, you said love. Lord Jesus, God is in thee and in truth. Lord, love is action. Oh, God, you're sick of mouth love. Lord, you're sick of, Lord, people loving you with mouth. Loving you, God, with, Lord, their lips. God singing about loving you, God, but then their action don't demonstrate love. Oh, God, Lord Jesus, I can show you. John, Lord Jesus, James said, oh, I show you my faith. Oh, by my action, by my works. Oh, it proves. Hallelujah. That I have faith in God. Lord, my action. Lord Jesus. God, Lord, our action speak louder than words. Oh, God, our action, Jesus. Oh, God, we say we love you. But, Lord, do we love you? God, when we're in our homes. God, do we love you, Lord? God, when we in, Lord Jesus, in other places. Lord, you said love. God, we're supposed to love you indeed and in truth. Lord, you love to not grieve the Holy Ghost. God, love to not grieve the Spirit. Lord, I don't want to grieve you, God. Lord, you told me to walk softly before you. God, I'm trying, God. I don't want to do nothing to upset the Holy Ghost. I don't want to do nothing, God. Lord Jesus, to cause the Spirit of God to be displeased. Lord, I want to be like Enoch, but Enoch had this sin. God, that he pleased God. I want to please you, Jesus. I want you to look, God, down upon us. Help us, Lord, when you look upon us, you told us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. God, we can't be holy and acceptable to each other. Oh, God, we got to be holy and acceptable unto you. Lord Jesus, oh, God, Lord, we got to present. God, get to a place where we're for your blameless, Lord, where our sins, oh Jesus, when we come on the blood, Lord, that there's no more sin, no more spot, no more wrinkles, no more blemish, Lord, but we've been renewed in the Holy Ghost. So, Lord, we pray tonight, God, I pray for all those, oh God, that are hearing this word, all those, Lord Jesus, that are there to be different.
All of those that are there, God, to forsake the world and turn their back on the world. Turn their back, God, on the love, all this stuff that out there in the world and come to you, Lord. God, and say, Lord, what will you have me to do? Oh, Jesus, that's my prayer. God, what will you have me to do? Oh, Lord, what is the will of God for my life? Oh, Jesus, not what I want to do, but God, what is that perfect will of God for my life? Lord, we need to know, God, the perfect will of God for our life because it is the only way we can come into perfection. God, we can't be perfected in Christ outside of your perfect will. The perfect will of God is the only thing that I have is where we need to be to be perfected. Lord Jesus, bring us into that perfect will. Touch each and every one of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hey man, how many believe that? How many believe that? You can't, how are you going to come into perfection outside of the perfect will of God? You Don't you know it's God's perfect will that going to have you where you need to be? Those that went to that upper room was in that perfect will. Those that heard it and just went back to doing it, they, was, they missed out. But those that were obedient to the will of God, the perfect will of God is the only, only way we can come into perfection. Because they're the leaders. God's will is not going to have you outside of where he wants you to be. So if you're in his perfect will, that means that you where God wants you to be. And he, the word of the Bible teaches me to fear not the little flock, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give unto us the kingdom. So if I'm in his perfect will, the perfect will of God is leading me to perfection. My will won't take me there. My will is going to take me to take me to Longhorn. It'll take me to Ted's, Montana Grill. Get a bison. But that perfect will of God, oh, my flesh ain't never took me to those. But the Spirit of God, that will of God will take you where you need to be. It'll have you in place, what I'm trying to say. It'll drive you. It'll have you in place. So when God pouring out this Holy Ghost, you won't miss it. Because his will for your life. And God got a perfect will for each and every one of our lives. He got a will for my life. He got a will even for my wife's life. And even though we're together, oh, there's going to be some things that God got for her to do. See what I'm saying? He got a will for each and every one of us. And he got a, a perfect will. And we can find it. Man, I'm, that's what I want.